get started, as we do each and every week, by introducing my my two co-hosts. We have Ruben Bressler. Hey, that's me. We have Aaron Campbell. Happy New Year. Yay! It's a new year. It's a new show for a new year. It's not a new show. It's the same old show. <laughs> the same show for the new year. <clears throat> but it's for the new year. It's for yes. 2016 now. 2016 version. And as it turns out, not a ton going on in Magic beyond spoilers. Now, spoilers, Christmas season, four times a right. year, that's great. So if all we have to talk about is our Christmas presents, basically, I'm okay with that. Yeah. So... Let's talk a little bit about some of these spoilers. And first, I wanted to, I wanted to preface this something we were talking about right before the show started, <clears throat> and I want to get your guys' opinion on this before we get going. <clears throat> Excuse me. Was this to me even beyond the leaks? As you know, Ruben, beyond the leaks, bat, like Oath of the Gatewatch is insanely exciting. It is better, in my yeah. opinion, right now. Just looking at, it, not even seeing the whole spoiler, it seems better than Battle for Zendikar. It's yeah. exciting, has really interesting mechanics, has really cool cards, has really sweet cycles, like is kind of mind blowing. Wizards should have, in my opinion, absolutely have done the colorless thing in Battle for Zendikar. I think they messed up not doing it. They should have had that whole set to do the colorless stuff, and then Oath could do something really sweet and crazy with it. And instead they kind of just have to like force it all in. Whereas some of these really cool colorless rares that we'll talk about, I think really should have been in Battle for Zendikar. Should it be right now on, you know, major tournament tables and it shouldn't have been, you know, Gideon and a bunch of cards that ain't Gideon. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you just look at the at the spoiler for the set and a lot of these cards, I just like read them and then I just like kind of don't <laughs> how is this how has this never been printed before? Yeah. These are amazing. Like there's a lot of unique cards um that, that are just unlike everything we've ever seen before. There's so many exciting, cool things happening in this set. Um, I really like how the set is is shaping up, even though the leaks happened and took some of the luster out of the the uh, the, 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 the the diamond colorless thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know that that's unfortunate, but here we are. Right. And a lot of these cards are just super sweet, even if you just didn't even look at the colorless uh, uh, generic split in mana. Yeah, I think that this set is just like the first time I I was on when I was on Facebook and I logged in and I saw Inverter of Truth, I just like I I don't under <laughs> like my brain just shut down and restarted because it's just so weird. Yeah, right? it's just so uh, this set is just really cool. Yeah, it is absolutely fantastic. Aaron, how do you feel about old uh, Oath at this point? <laughs> um, I think it's it's okay. Like, I have to say, I'm more excited about it from a lore perspective and from a Vorthos perspective. I really want to know more about what this Oath is going to be about. I want to know if there's going to be, like, an Oath of Obnixilis. Like, I wonder if there's going to be a Black Oath. I wonder, you know, what's going on with the Eldrazi. I wonder if Emrakul is going to show up, because Maro gave a very cryptic response on his Tumblr when somebody asked kind of where Emrakul is. Um, I'm anxious to see uh, the 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 battle between Kalitas and uh, Drana, because there's that history there. Um, I just want to know more about the lore. I have to admit there aren't many cards that really get me going. Right. I will say, though, Ruben, that inverter you talked about, for a second there, I did have a thought of reanimating it with Dredge, because when your library gets really small, you can keep the game going again, but I knew you'd be mad at me, so I tossed the idea. Um, but yeah, I mean, there are cards that I like, and we'll certainly talk about them today, but I'm more excited about the story. I'm really, really hungry to see some Uncharted Realms. Well, and based that art on... book, the art book is amazing. The art book came out the day and it looks really sweet like a bunch of pictures of like nahiri that no one ever seen before that was really cool mm -hmm. um <clears throat> and uh the the chat has noted that marrow has confirmed there is no black oath so oh well i mean as you saw in all the images it was just those four you know standing up there oath of ob Nixilis, and he doesn't but seem like that like wouldn't be sweet type. though but his could have been a diabolical no, obviously it'd be great yeah, yeah if it enters the battlefield and diabolic edicts the opponent and then the full-time ability is that like your opponent's planeswalkers come in with one less loyalty counter or something ridiculous like that <gasps> I don't yeah, know, of course, man. that'd be amazing, but, I mean, that's... Uh, look, I just designed that card in my head. <laughs> so For the sake of torturing your soul, I will keep yeah. watch. r &D calls him out. Like, we really like your ideas. <laughs> I'll keep watch, because that's what I do. I watch you while you sleep. Oh, that's right. That would be awkward. Hashtag watching. Oh, Lord. All right, so... Oath of Bressler, just... <laughs> oh, my God. 
right there. That's where we're at. That's what we're looking at. So I'm going to pull up the spoilers right now on the screen. So what I was, uh, so how we're going to handle this is last week we recorded on December 30th. So we were able to talk about all of the cards from December 30th backward. So I'm going to pull up mythicspoiler.com, which is basically where spoilers live these days. There's nothing that's anywhere real close usually. And um, we have December 31st. So we'll start there. Okay. I have them on screen. We currently have, uh, you know, Stoneforge Masterwork, Deceiver of Form, Oath of Jace, the Hissing Quagmire, Aaron. Hissing. Are you calling me a Hissing Quagmire? No, I'm saying this is <laughs> not, the land not for you. you a hissing Quagmire. <laughs> <laughs> not doing that, but I am noting it is a black green man land. Yes. Uh, I also got to unveil my spoiler that some that interacts with man lands very well, which I was very yeah. happy about. I think my card's very, very good. Um, but so as a black green mage... What do you think about this man land? I I feel the way about this like I did with Shambling Vent. I have to say I'm not immediately impressed with it, mm -hmm. but I felt that way about Shambling Vent, and I think a lot of us did. You know, we saw a two, three white, black lifelinker, and we were like, ew, like who's going to use this? And, you know, cut to the present day where a lot of decks are running it, and especially as a control player, I'm having to make sure I have kill spells that specifically can deal with a Shambling Vent. Right. Um, you know, making sure I have Murderous Cut, making sure I have Complete Disregard, um, because Utter End doesn't hit it. And ultimate price doesn't hit it, and your foul tongue might not hit it. So I think this is one that, like, right now I'm not really thrilled with. But if you get back to me in like two months, I think it's going to be amazing. I just don't quite see it yet. I mean, I think if people haven't figured out that manlands are good, something's yeah. going on. Like they haven't really been paying too much attention. Like manlands are super good, even that these are powered down, which I think these are, versus the first set. I think yeah. the first set were way better, way more powerful. Like this. These this set is like remarkably like a little bit lower on the power curve. Still great, but a little bit lower. Yeah, I think that I'm surprised that of the three man lands that will be printed in this set, I think the black green one's the best one, which yeah. I was very surprised to see because I thought for sure they'd make it weaker. I thought it was just going to turn into a deadly recluse for four mana <laughs> or something ridiculous, <laughs> horrible like that because it's a right. black green man land. Jund is yeah. going to play this in modern. You know, this is going to be Cards played good. in Abzan in Standard. It could be an awful 1-1 regenerator, and it would see play by virtue of just being a black-green man land. Yeah. The fact that it's a 2-2 two -two with, a, with a relevant ability, and it only activates for three, is huge. Um, you yeah. know, one of, the, of, of the original man lands, Celestial Colonnade has sort of, you know, been the, the, the poster child because it's a 4-4 four -four with flying and vigilance. Like, mm -hmm. that's absurd. But the second most popular... And for a while, the most popular was Creeping Tar Pit by virtue of being just three to activate. Raging I Ravine? Mean, Raging Ravine was very popular in its day, too, but... They won a Pro um, Tour. It, it, yeah, I, Evan, would you let me finish? <laughs> I mean, I understand Raging Ravine's very popular, but I think that Creeping Tar Pit has survived the test of time better. It has. I agree with that. And so, I do think uh, Hissing Quagmire is a nice answer to Shambling Vent, too, because Shambling mm -hmm. Vents just tend to you know, butt heads against each other where right. activate Shambling Vent, I'll activate my Shambling Vent, but like you activate your Shambling Vent, I activate Hissing Quagmire. Thanks for trying, girl. Like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think Hissing Quagmire is great. Nice shot. All right. So Oath of Jace. Um, uh, so is a blue and two generic mana legendary enchantment. When it enters the battlefield, you draw three, you discard two. At the beginning of your upkeep, you scry X, where X is the number of planeswalkers you control. Most of the Oaths just in general, in my opinion, are kind of blank after that first ability. That first ability is what you're paying for. The second ability is like, all right, here's some gravy. stuff that, yeah. This you know what it is. It's Aaron, you know what it is. You know what it is. It's bacon. I'm like a vegan Aaron, black bean burger, maybe, but. <laughs> Unbelievable. This you is... could have sold t-shirts just there. And you God, not. <laughs> we could have made things. We could have made us a thing. You set them up. You put it on the little tee. You know, this is this is like t-ball. It's not even softball. It's not even baseball. God. Whatever. Man. Anyway, Oath anyway, of Jace is great. Oath of Jace is awesome. Uh, this card is great. I don't think it's the best Oath, which we'll get to here shortly. But, you know, again, for a, a blue card that draws cards and helps filter, okay, with a sweet yeah. gravy bonus, sometimes called bacon on vegan meat patties burgers, or whatever. Yeah. God. Oath yeah, of Boca. I actually I mean, do anything think that so, says draw three cards. I mean, well, like, I what, will what say else though, between need? Oath of Jace and Oath of Gideon, I do think that could make Esper Super Friends attractive, and that I'm interested in that because. But I love Oath of Gideon. We'll get to it here shortly. One other one I want to talk about from the uh, December 31st. A Commander players are going nuts over General Tazri because it's another five color commander. 
Sure. Right. And I think well, it's Well, they great. were going nuts for the Stoneforge, too. Yeah, yeah. The, the, that's what, those, the, what I was and just about to get to. let me just say, God bless EDH players, because whenever, whenever spoilers come out, they are the first ones. Before the modern people, before the standard people, you always get those people that are like, this is going in my Vela Melfagor Civic Gyro And it's just like, what? <laughs> and, can yeah. you bring it back to Constructed, please? Like, they're the first ones launching off at these crazy decks they're going to build, and you're just like, I don't even know what that is, but okay. And sure. you know, I, hope, I hope they... Place. I, get, I hope that whoever invented uh, or popularized Commander, like Sheldon and whoever his cabal of Commander overlords are, <laughs> I hope they get a residual check for creating that format because uh, yeah. it's quite the cash cow. People would not n be nearly as excited for, I don't know, Most shale things. treads and vorinclexes <laughs> as they are currently. Oh, yeah, sure. I mean, so into it. One thing to note with Oath of Jace, what I think is interesting, which come from the chat, which is Oath of Jace is card neutral. You're not... Like you're playing the card Jace Oath of Jace, you're drawing three, and so you're, and then you're discarding two, so you're still moving through three cards there. Sure, and it does yeah, be yeah, Jace yeah. itself. You know, Jace the Planeswalker. In order to flip, you need you know four going on five in your yard. So if you're hard up for cards, I mean right. it, it works. I but mean. I think the 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 call. Uh, I'm sorry, the um, the coat of arms equipment, Stoneforge Masterwork, is a brilliant piece of design. I think it's great. Yes. Yeah, Stoneforge Masterwork is super cool. I uh, I'm I'm pretty excited for that card actually for potentially for constructed because there just isn't a good equipment in standard and this can get real big real fast with core with goblins yeah. with with hangerback walker if you needed that card to be any better this is a this card is this card means business it is it deceptively equips, powerful it equips for one mm -hmm. or I'm sorry, for cast two. for one cast for one equips for two read its ability that for everybody. Is, that is, okay, so Stoneforge Masterwork is a one-mana equipment. Equipped creature gets plus one, plus one for each other creature you control that shares a creature type with it. Equip for two. So it's half of Conda's banner, right? Sure. If anybody is, old, is an old man like I am. Of course But I remember it that. also it doesn't need to be equipped to a legendary creature, which is nice. Um, but yeah, if you put this on a Hordling Outburst token, you put this on a, on a Hangerback Walker Thopter, uh, you know, you cast Mom and Dad Nalar, and you put this on one of them... Boy, this thing is sweet. This is a lot of punch in a one mana card. Yeah, for something that can be t not found by Trinket Mage or what have you, oh, like, geez. like just saying, yeah, it's, not it's, bad. it's really, really excellent. So, like, I think they, you know, just kind of put both barrels this week in terms of awesome spoilers. We're gonna move on to January first. We rang in the new year with what I feel is the best oath, and that is Oath of Nissa. I have it on the screen here. It's a green, one green. Remember that one green legendary enchantment. When it enters the battlefield, you look at the top three cards of your library, you may reveal a creature, land, or planeswalker from among them and put it into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom of your library. Its second ability is you may spend mana as though it were mana of any color to cast planeswalker spells, also known as who cares. That ability yeah. is nuts. <laughs> that ability is un yeah. crazy good. They printed green impulse. Crazy good. Like, it's insane. It's what green wants to be doing. You don't think that this is just the best oath. You think this is the best card. It's one of the best cards in the set, I feel. It's one of the best cards. Now, you know, there's not a Planeswalker, I get it. It's not, the, like, the most powerful Pyroclasm ever, whatever. But, like, it is one of the best. I feel it is going to see play in a ton of formats. It gets, it gets exactly what you want in the green deck. Multiples are perfect. In modern, it powers up Tarmogoyf. In standard, who cares? Like, you're just trying to riffle, you know, go through your deck. It's close to a green Ponder, a green Impulse. Like, this card is crazy exciting. And, of course, Aaron doesn't like it at all. <laughs> Come on now. At least I'm consistent. Uh, so Fair wandering enough. fumeral, how about that? Uh... <laughs> well, I, I have a thought on Oath of Nissa before we go. Let's this go with Oath of Nissa. Puts the cards real quickly. Puts it on the bottom of your library. So a lot of times when you brainstorm or you ponder, you only want one, maybe two of the cards. Mm -hmm. Oath after a turn two brainstorm or whatever allows you to get rid of all that extra chaff and keep your guy in play. Oh, by the way, it's an enchantment for Tarmogoyf and okay, it does a lot okay. of stuff. Mana. I did find a use for Oath of Nissa. Here we go. It's that proxy bait. No. Planes. Legacy Enchantress. Yeah. Yes, it would be great in Legacy Enchantress. See? It's, it finds your Enchantress. Yeah. I needed a second. Or it but... finds your Sarah's Sanctum. Yeah, that's great. Absolutely. Or it's, oh, it's a, you can't look for other enchantments. Okay, but still, it's, it's good. So. It, uh, oh, it only looks for three card types that are in like every green deck. Okay. I mean, but you have to understand, Still I play a deck that regularly sees six cards per draw. That's nothing. This card is great. Now, He's Wandering, wandering Fumarole is our long-awaited blue-red manland. 
It enters the battlefield tapped. It taps for a blue or red. Blue, red, two generic mana, colon. Until end of turn, it becomes a 1-4 elemental creature with zero colon. Switch this creature's power and toughness until end of turn. So that kind of led to what I would like. I literally just found out tonight as Ruben explained to me, explain to me this ridiculous infinite mana combo or infinite <laughs> yeah. damage combo. Thing. In, okay. So wandering fumarole is sweet because I think that no one predicted that this is what this card was going to do. Um, which, you know, it's like kind of easy to predict the white black duel, right? It's kind of easy to predict, Oh, the red white one's going to have double strike. Mm -hmm. But no one thought wandering fumarole was going to be a one for the aqua Meepas that can just flip back and forth. Uh, endlessly. So the cool thing about Wandering Fumarole is zero colon. Right. That means that you get to play an infinite combo with Ceaseless Seer Blades. So Ceaseless Seer Blades is, uh, for those of you who played uh, Lorwyn I'm Draft. Googling this. Oh, I'm Googling I'm bringing it up on screen. It was a regular like sixth pick or something. It was three colorless and red. Uh, it was an elemental shaman. Shaman. No, uh, warrior. Oh, is it an elemental warrior? Elemental warrior. I got it. On, okay, well, I have it on the screen now. So we don't have to worry about the pronunciation of shaman. Um, but yeah, it, uh, it's it's uh, it's a it's a two four for three colorless and red. And whenever you activate an ability of a, I'm trying to get the wording right. Whenever you activate the ability of an elemental, it gets plus one plus zero until end of turn. Right. So basically, you can flip this back and forth endlessly. Uh, and make ceaseless seer blades infinitely huge. Oh, by the way, there's already lava claw reaches, which has X colon. It's an elemental, so you can flip those back and forth endlessly and make ceaseless seer blades huge. So now right. you have two copy. You have eight potential lands that you could just play in a mono red deck with ceaseless seer blades. Make it infinitely huge ceaseless seer blades and fling it at them or something. Uh, yeah, do something with a monstrously. Not saying it's infinite. good. I'm saying it exists. That's all. And that's why that's what I liked about it. I like these random you remember this card from like ten years ago. Oh, by the way, now it's an infinite combo because this other thing was printed strangely enough. I, I will like give you one thing, Ruben, though. The art on the Sear Blades is cool. I just yeah. looked at the art. Very cool. The art is cool. Stabby stabby twins. I think that wandering fumarole is pretty cool, uh, in in another facet, in that, you know, the blue red decks that don't have white um mm -hmm. in modern are looking for like a way to actually have a, a, a land that finishes people mm -hmm. you know the 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 creeping tar pits are too easily shocked Kolagon's command is like really popular right now right the fact that wandering fumarole doesn't die to much except for like this member is a is a pretty big deal there you do go. you know what a fumarole is a fumarole mm -hmm. i believe it's something volcanic related it's like a it's like a steam vent there you Not go. in it's terms an... of the, the mana that it taps for, but in terms of actually what it is. It is an opening in a planet's crust, often in the neighborhood of volcanoes, which emit steam and gases. Yeah. So there wow. you go. So right, the next then. time I take poisonous. Ruben out for dinner, he can be a... Never mind, that joke's not going to land, but go Come on. on, man. Wow. <laughs> yeah, just... All right. We're moving on, ladies and gentlemen. You hissing to... quagmire. <laughs> to January Wandering 4th. Wandering fumarole. All right, so January 4th uh, unveiled Overwhelming Denial, which is the new last word. It is strictly better than last word. Last word from Darksteel was too blue, too generic. Counter a spell. It, this spell can't be countered. That's what last word said, just the end. This one does the exact same thing. Too blue, too generic. Overwhelming Denial can't be countered by spells or abilities. Counter target spell. However, it has that magical keyword of surge. Surge of blue, blue, which means it is a counter spell that cannot be countered. It is the end. It is the master of all counter wars. Yep. All counter wars will come down to who has the Overwhelming Denial and stop that crap. It's very counter flux-esque in terms of the way it's going to impact control mirrors and control games. But now it doesn't even need red. It's just blue, blue. Yep. You, were, you were countering something. No, thank you. Absolutely not happening. I like yeah, it. This, this card, wow. Did, we, did, did I just hear that? What? She likes it. <laughs> oh, my God. Hey, you, you like it hard? Hey, I Mikey. Do. She likes it. Um, <laughs> But yeah, this is uh, much much like Counterflux had an immediate impact on how people had to build decks. Like, mm -hmm. you can't just build these super... Remember a couple episodes ago, Aaron was complaining about how, no, this isn't a control deck, this is just 30 kill spells and one secure the waste. <laughs> like, that was the complaint. You can't do that anymore because overwhelming denial exists. So there you go. Yeah. This is, like, definitely a different way 
you have to build control decks now. So you have to put in more win conditions. Cards have to have more overlapping abilities because if you can't beat an overwhelming denial or two, then you're just not going to be able to have a win condition. I think this card is super sweet. Um, it's it's quite good in Legacy as well because you have the free counter spells, Days and Force of Will. Mm -hmm. uh, so you can back those up whenever you need to force through whatever it is you need to force through. Mm -hmm. This card is really good. Uh, I'm a little underwhelmed, no pun intended, by the art, um, but whatever. It's just some breezy... You know, I'm sure some promo breezy. will come out that's way cooler than this that involves Jace or something. All right. Aaron, how do you feel about a card that you actually like? <laughs> I'm excited about this. You know, I've been playing Esper Control for the past month, practicing for GP Oakland, which Ruben and I will be that. Come be there, come say hello to us. Mm -hmm. Um and uh, I think this is really good. You know, there are times, particularly in the control mirror, where you're fighting over a, a dig through time or you're fighting over a painful truth or something like that that can really make or break the game. And um, I, I, I've actually gotten, I've gotten kind of used to counterflux being in modern, you know, having that, that option available, that kind of counter spell available. And I would even go so far as to say that I feel like this should just sort of be a mainstay. I feel like, you know, a format, you know, we, you know, we have certain counter spells that meet certain criteria. Like we have our negates and our spells and, and what they do and then you have the the dissipate kind of one where it's like you always have that one counter that exiles something or what well, was dissolve wasn't it dissolve and there dissolve. was putting it on the bottom of the counter and bottom of the library and all the other good stuff right like, yeah. and this is sort of you know i think this is another one of those counter spells that a format just kind of needs just you know like like there's different kill spells that meet different roles i think this is one i'd like to see going forward in every standard to some capacity so the thing that i, I noted and we talked about this with our, our google hangout was um, you know, for me, I see a lot of overwhelming denial being used as a two mana kicker. Basically, mm -hmm. I'm yeah. going to play a spell. I'm going to have two blue open, and no matter what happens, that spell is resolving, whether you like it or not. So that unless yeah. they have a second counter, spell. And unless they have you know way way too much, but more than likely, right. that's what's going to happen. Yeah, They're going to try to counter it. You're going to say no. It's happening. Mm -hmm. That that's all. That's another kind of like bonus to it. Yes, it wins counter wars, but it also just says I now have two extra blue mana. I can almost guarantee this spell is going to happen. Yeah. yeah. As a result. So let's move on here. They uh, renamed the Coming to Play Taplands. Don't care. Oath of yeah. Gideon. <laughs> I mean, you know, whatever. They can't have Someday Shiv and Gorge. Someday they'll make those common, just generic common instead of gates. And that'll make you excited for Popper. Yes, but it will. That's about it'll, it. It'll make me super oh, excited. Wow. Hey, we have the gain lands and we have the, the guild gates. All right. Don't be hating. Um, yes. Oath of Gideon. tough. She's hating. She's literally hating right now. Oath of Gideon. <laughs> Is a white and two generic mana legendary enchantment. It's a rare. When it enters the battlefield, put two one one white core ally creature tokens onto the battlefield, which will trigger all of your rally. Each planeswalker you control enters the battlefield with an additional loyalty counter on it. That is huge. Yes. This is the really interesting oath, and in that the second part of the oath is the really exciting, awesome, fun part. And the first part's like, eh, whatever. I don't care. I just want my my planeswalkers to be awesome. Yeah. The fact that Oath of Gideon allows you to uh, keep a Gideon around after you get an emblem right? Uh, on its first activation. Let's you keep a Soren after you've minus two'd it twice. Yeah. Is a huge deal. Um, these are, I mean, Oath of Gideon and also all of the Flip Planeswalkers get better as well uh, right. because they exile themselves and then come back. Uh, Oath of Gideon is really exciting. It also creates two allies, which is huge for uh, for tribal purposes. Oh, like Stoneforge Ironworks or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think that this card's really this. I think that this is the best Oath of the set, honestly, for standard. Maybe not for m older formats. Sure. I think Oath of Gideon is the one for standard. Somebody had tweeted there. I think it was either on Reddit or Twitter, but somebody had said that they were looking forward to pairing Oath of Gideon with Tezzeret Agent of Bolas because Tezzeret would come into play ready to its ultimate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, oh, goody. Like, no. <laughs> like, oh, God. Like, Tezzeret enters the battlefield, bam, lose your X life and you gain X life right off the bat. Where that's kind of right. scary. Like, oh, it's no. Good. It's yeah. a good fireball. The yeah. the design of planeswalkers is very much like it's they are so fragile. Anything wrong one way or the other and they break. Mm -hmm. And loyalty numbers are incredibly important and incredibly powerful and their loyalty numbers that they start out with are always a big big deal because Kiora sucks when she only has two ca two loyalty counters but had she had three probably in a whole different ball game Gideon is already a format all-star now he gets to play his oath get some guys to protect him and then play him and ultimate him and still stick around that's a big big deal uh -huh. yeah 
So that card seems like absolutely fantastic for uh, for standard. I'm very excited about it. Let's keep moving. We're, we're moving on. Uh, Eldrazi Displacer is is very interesting. A, it's one of the only white Devoid cards. Yeah. That's the thing. But it's a white and two generic mana Eldrazi. It's rare. It has Devoid. Uh, it's a 3-3. Three, three, so it's three mana for a 3-3. Three, three. Uh, two generic mana and a colorless mana. Three mana total. Exile. Now this is colon. Two generic mana, colorless mana, colon. Exile another target creature, then return it to the battlefield tapped under its owner's control. Obviously, we talked about Linvala last week, and that is a complete Magical Christmas Land Mondo combo. In the real world, this thing resets man lands. This thing, you know, fixes stuff with counters on it that you don't like. This thing basically resets a card that they are attacking with, and it just nullifies their attack. Like... This thing slices and dices. I think this card is incredibly good. Uh, Aaron, tell me wh why you hate it. <laughs> I like it for the reasons that you said. Like, give me really, like, you know, complex, you know, thought-provoking interactions. I just don't care for it because I'm seeing a lot of the janky ones. Like, I'm going to pair it with Seed Rhino. And I'm like, oh, girl. Like, just really obvious kind of, like, stuff, you know. But for what you said, I'm completely here for it. I think with Linvala, it could be fun, too. Sure. Um, you know, amazing. So I, I, yeah, so I like it with just little, you know, little meatier interactions. I'm not really here for the, the janky things you can do with it. All right. How about an infinite combo? Are you interested in a standard infinite combo with Eldrazi Displacer? <laughs> Go on. Bring it on. Eldrazi Displacer, mm -hmm. Brood Monitor. Yes. And okay. Zulaport Cutthroat. Yeah. I'm Googling this. Well, okay. they all, brood, brood, brood Monitor is the 3 3 that makes 3 3 3 Scions. Yeah. Zulaport says whenever something dies, they lose, you gain. So you use the 3 Scions with Displacer to. to, uh, to to, pro to, to, keep to oh. flicker, oh. Start to the flicker the brood monitor, and, and then you do in. it again. Yeah, and you do it I again. Can get down with that. Yeah, that no, it's four colorless green green to play a brood monitor, which is like a high price to pay. But you know, I think that Eldrazi Displacer isn't going to see the infinite combos are not where Eldrazi Displacer is going to be. Right. It's just going to be a great value card. Um, Mist Metal Witch is what it reminds me of. I mean, there's been a couple cards like this. At least you can kill this. You could never kill a Mist Metal Witch. Um, but <laughs> it yeah, does say another target really creature. Oh, by the way, it's just a 3-3 three, three for 3. It just starts pounding early. Uh, yeah. I think this card's quite good. This card is very, very powerful. Very, very good. Mist Metal Witch. That art is cool. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mist oh, Metal Witch is creepy. That was Shadowmore, right? That card was my jam. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> Oh. It was really sweet. Eldrazi Displacer, I mean, you know, when you have two of them out, like, it just, it makes combat a nightmare for your opponent. And yeah. if any enter the battlefield triggers for the, for your creatures, uh, any uh, drawbacks for their creatures enter the battlefield, like, it just, it messes with everything, which is, I think, amazing. This card um, will be in the next instance of the Legacy Cube. That's how good this card is. Because there's enough cards that you want for the Blink deck in the Legacy Cube, this card will see play. And there's, there's, I mean, there are enough mediocre three drops in Legacy Cube currently that this is going to uh, displace one of them. Because <laughs> his name is Eldrazi Displacer. Oh, wow. Well, you've turned into a robot, by the way, based on your oh, bandwidth. God. Someone displaced your internet connection. Just. Right. <laughs> but it's getting a little bit better and then it gets worse. However, Corrupted Crossroads is a rare land. Uh, it... It taps for a color. It taps for a colorless actual diamond. Tap, pay one life colon, add one mana of any color to your mana pool. Spend this mana only to cast a spell with devoid. So you're adding colored mana, but you're going to play a colorless spell with it. <laughs> so does that mean that we'll see you at the crossroads? Oh my god! Yeah. That's How right. dare you? At the crossroads. Crossroads. <laughs> <laughs> That's how we do things around here. So yeah. for Corrupted Crossroads, do you get your bacon on your cheeseburger? You get to play no. colored devoid spells and colorless? Got you got your vegan, you know, bean patty over there? That's how you're feeling? We'll, we'll get to the bacon. The bacon's All right. coming. Bacon's this coming. Right. Pretty sweet. Bacon's coming. What do you guys think about it? It's good. I think that this is the kind of card that the, that the devoid deck needed. You know, yeah. Forerunner of Slaughter is real hard to cast. Mm -hmm. Um... Uh, you know, you want to be playing a lot of the sweet Devoid cards, not be stuck on two, three colors. And it's the mana's tougher in the Devoid deck because you're going to want to be playing some of these cards that have the the uh, the the colorless only symbol in them. You know, you want to be start. You want to activate your ability on your Mind Melters and stuff like that. You want to cast your Warping Whales, and this is the kind of thing that that uh, that is going to be able to 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 help with that. Yeah, Aaron, do you have any strong feelings one way or the other about Corrupted Crossroads? I kind of have. 
it, it, when I look at this, I kind of think of, do you remember that article that Andrew Boswell wrote, which was amazing about manic confluence yeah. and about yes. like why manic confluence was so good in absent agro and using life as your resource. When I look at corrupted crossroads, I kind of think of manic confluence where it's like, you know, that going back to the Eldrazi agro decks and the devoid agro decks and sort of getting what you need when you need it. And, and if your opponent's dead before you are, that's kind of what it reminds me of. Like hmm. I could see it being used in a fast Eldrazi agro deck. I'm just sure. I will, I will also quickly mention Pyromancer's Assault. Uh, it's a red and three generic mana it, uncommon enchantment that whenever you cast your second spell each turn, it deals two damage target creature or player. This is one of those perfect build around me draft uncommons. And it also plays into surge without really saying surge, which I think yeah. is really cool. And that to me is like the coolest part about the card. It's like, it's referencing a mechanic without referencing a mechanic. It's very clever. It's a build around me. I think that's really sweet. Yeah. I just wanted to note that Ruben, you had a, you made it's a face. Not, unfortunately it's like, it's not Burning Vengeance. It's like not even that good. Oh, I loved Much Burning less Vengeance. Lightning, uh, Lightning Rift. Like oh, obviously God. Lightning Rift is the perfect red build around me enchantment. Sure. I loved Burning Vengeance. The first set yeah. of Burning Vengeance was legal after Innistrad came out. I played mm -hmm. it in standard. I did it too. It was not good. But no, I, I was, was like, anyway. what are you doing? Yeah. But Pyromancer's Assault is sadly even worse. First of all, it costs four. Second of all, you can't act, you can't trigger it twice in the same turn. Right. Yeah. Uh, I just, I just don't, it's unfortunate. I'm sad because I love these, but Pyromancer's Assault, it just, it's not doing it. It's cute and clever. It also does hit creatures or players. It's a big deal. That's mm -hmm. true. I mean, that's just, that's a thing. So, all right. Anyway, I just wanted to point that out. Let's move on to January 5th. And there were some, there were some big ones here. There was, a, there was an uncommon series of uh, enemy color cards, which I thought were neat. Uh, but for me, the first one really is uh, Inverter of Truth that I've brought up on the screen here. It is a two black, two colorless Eldrazi. It is mythic. It is devoid. It has flying. And when it enters the battlefield, exile all cards from your library face down. Then shuffle all cards from your graveyard into your library. It is a 6-6. Six, six. So for four mana, you get a 6-6 six, six flyer. It exiles your library, and then your graveyard becomes your library. So if you're willing, you know, if you're willing to go... And, and go there. Could it? Could this actually be a player in any fashion? Aaron, this is a black card. Let's hear. Let's hear what you got to say on this one. I mean, for a second there, I did have the thought of reanimating this with Dredge. <laughs> yeah, you did. <laughs> because your library, something you you get down to those last four cards, and your opponent's not quite dead yet. And you've got a nice full graveyard, and you're like, okay, fine. I'll I'll exile these four cards. I'll put this big graveyard of mine back in my library, and we'll do the damn thing over again. And then I realized it maybe isn't the greatest, but it was fun to think about. And um, cards like Abyssal Persecutor have always found a home. You know, they. Yeah. I, I think we went through this with you know Desecration Demon was the thing and that was another yeah. card that people were like this is terrible no one's going to use this um, um and then that saw play i think this will find a home somewhere i don't quite know where it is but just the history of cards like this i think it'll it'll, it'll see play desecration demon was my preview by the way it oh was yeah for return to ravnica yes it was i and was i remember when people thought it was dreadful and they were like this is never going to see play and all of a sudden you know black green yeah. was a thing and right. then you were able to pair it with like disciple of both oh, those were good days well here's here was the problem with with, the, with desecration demon there was lingering souls mm -hmm. lingering souls in the format but when Lingering Souls in the format, Desecration Demon is awful. But as soon as it left, Pack Rat was a thing, blew up, de Devotion, it was crazy, it was all good. So Ruben, how do you feel about this guy? This guy seems just really sweet. This is the guy that blew my mind when I first read him. And I'll be honest, when Aaron first saw it and thought of Dredge, I saw it and first thought of Burn. Um, cause this is like, cause you're like, all right, burn spell, burn spell, burn spell. You got like six cards in your graveyard. Just shuffle them all back in. You're guaranteed to top that gas for the rest of the game. That's what I thought of. Okay. Um, I don't think that either of those are likely scenarios. Mm -hmm. uh, I certainly think that Inverter of Truth is going to have a home in a more aggressive strategy than a combo or a control strategy, of course. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I think that, that this is the kind of card that, you know, you can't, I mean, 6-6 six, six flyer for four is nothing to sneeze at. <laughs> that's a, that's, that, those are some powerful stats. So somebody's going to try to make it work. I'm not smart enough to do it. Um, I'm just gonna, you know, I'm just gonna play the cards that I know are good. You know what I mean? Like Void Grafter. Like I've seen that card before. Yeah. Void Grafter is the the uh, Plax Manta. 
that's what that card is. Like I'm I'm all on board with Void Grafter. So you are giving my gatherer a workout tonight. Well, <laughs> Void, well, Void Gatherer. No, it's not. In, well, it's not in Gatherer yet. Um, but yeah, if you want to talk about the Plax Mana, uh, yeah. Void Grafter for those uh, listening is a blue, a green, and a generic mana for a two four. Uh, it is a Eldrazi drone. It's uncommon and has Devoid Flash. When it enters the battlefield, another target creature you control gains hexproof until end of turn. Uh, Plax Mana did very much similar to that. Uh, back in the day, this was like Dissension. Is that, that right? Was Dissension. Yeah. Dissension. Yeah. So, so that's a really cool yeah. card. It's a great combat trick. It just it always surprises your opponent most of the time, uh, yeah. which I think is sweet. But we have to talk about Hedron alignment. Yeah. Hedron alignment is the weirdest, funniest, stupidest. <laughs> it's absolutely ridiculous. Uh -huh. it, it it just lights people's imagination on fire. It's a blue and two generic mana rare enchantment with hexproof. At the beginning of your upkeep, you may reveal your hand. If you do. You win the game if you own a card named Hedron Alignment in Exile, in your hand, in your graveyard, and on the battlefield. Yay! Also, BT Dubs, uh, a blue and generic mana cola, Scry 1. That's yeah, it. just I say mean, BT, it dubs. BT Dubs. BT Dubs. Yeah, That's, man. By the way. So, except, you know, I bring it from the streets. And, um, yeah, so... <laughs> You're like 30. <laughs> You're unbelievable. Yes, I am. But that's that's how we roll. And so Hedron alignment is hilarious. Yeah. You know, not as hilarious as me bringing it from the streets, but hilarious none, nonetheless. Yeah. Yeah, that card's great. Um, there, I can foresee. I mean, Reddit has already come up with the turn three win, where you have. play it on turn two with the City of Traders or uh, uh, an Ancient Tomb, then put the trigger on the stack in your upkeep. Intuition, put one in your hand and the other two in your graveyard. Play Fairy Macabre, targeting the one of the two copies. Exile it, reveal your hand, win the game on in your upkeep on turn three. I don't know how likely that is, but I certainly could, you know. I think that probably like Sea Stompy style, where you exile one of them to a Crow Mox is probably more likely. Um, this card's not going to be good in standard. It's just not going to be good in any... I, I can't imagine that this will be an actual tier one or tier two player in any format, but it is excellent that it exists and I'm happy it exists. The fact that it, the fact that it has hex proof is actually hugely important uh, that you can actually get your combo off. Uh, so I think that, that, you know, it has potential. Again, I'm not going to be the one to figure it out because I'm very stupid, but I think the card's <laughs> sweet. I think the card is really cool. It's it's there to uh, you know it, it's there to it's there to make the mind kind of wonder about like wow this is a really cool thing and could I ever make this happen and people who like to build these decks you know get to go nuts. There's a lot of cards that actually came out on January 5th, including mine, Sylvan Advocate, which we will talk about briefly because I want your all's official opinion on this. So I already made a magic show really quickly about it. I think this card is really really good. It's a green and a generic mana for a two three, uh, vigilance elf druid ally. As long as you control six or more lands. Him and the land creatures you control get plus two, plus two. So for main lands, I think that's a big, big deal. I think this is the number one two drop that you want in Obzon Aggro at this point because of all this really sweet synergies in the late game. Now you have another main land that's going to have, that's going to be a four, four death touch if you have one of these guys out. It stacks. So if you have two of these guys out, then you have a six, six hissing miasma, whatever that thing is. Hissing yep. Meandra. <laughs> hissing miasma is a different card, but yes. No. What is it's uh, a hissing quagmire? Vent. Hissing you got quagmire. Six seven life linking sham shambling vents. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I'm just saying it's like it's well, it's kind of. Not to mention a, if really you pair that with Anafenza. I mean, just like having turn two advocate, turn three Anafenza, and then turn four they start attacking together. Like that's a bad scene. Yes, I don't want to be on the other side of that. Like ugh. card's great. Vigilance I mean, is the best possible keyword to put on this card, I think. Uh, yeah. Playing offense and defense really well. Right. Um, people are already kind of comparing it to Tarmogoyf in how it grows as the game moves on. Mm -hmm. uh, if our aggro decks are going to have 26 lands, this guy's going to be a 4-5 a lot of the time. Um, yeah, I think that the, and in addition to the fact that it's an ally, it's it's great. This is the two drop that uh, Abzan aggro wants other than the legendary white-black cleric uh, lady. Um, I think it's the best monocolored creature in the set not colorless not two color best monocolored creature in the set it is very good um you know there are a lot of really good colorless creatures and there's there's two really good uh, multicolored creatures the 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 cleric and the uh the blue red uncommon that we didn't discuss the one three flying haste prowess uh storm chaser mage i think is insane i think that's probably the best multicolored creature maybe the best creature in the set um but yeah your uh your wow. preview card is quite a good one they gave me an excellent uh, one. Advocate. I appreciate that. Aaron, how do you feel about him? Um, oh, come on! 
<laughs> this like this is literally we are looking at magic inflation right here. This is magic inflation. This is where Elvish Warrior not only is an Elvish Warrior like it's easier to cast, it's like got a ton of amazing abilities that are relevant. I'm actually more terrified of Reality Smasher. Yeah, I mean, Reality Smash is great, too, but that's not what we're talking about right now. Right, know, we're talking just... about Sylvan Advocate. You're telling me that you you feel nothing. You, you have no feelings. Wow. Well, the only reason, here's the reason why. Because when you when you psyched this up to me, you didn't tell me what it was, which to be, you know, you're not supposed to. That's fine. Right. But you had said, you know, this is going to be in a red green Tron deck and you're going to love this little lady. And I'm just like, oh, okay. And I thought it was going to go in my ramp deck and I was all excited. I said it was going to be in a ramp deck because what happens? A ramp deck has too many lands. That's their problem. They have too many lands. They draw an explosive vegetation. Oh, crap. It, it does nothing. Well, now, I, I don't Sylvan Advocate. And maybe it's not. Again, as, as time went on, I saw that it's more and more attuned to OBS on aggro. But, you know, it was just first impressions. So I was feeling very deceived, very unloved. <laughs> and Oh, my God. <sighs> yep, yep, yep. All right, so we're going to... Yeah, gonna... I mean, Reality Smasher is, the be is possibly the best creature in the set. I mean, it's... It's stupidly powerful. It is a <laughs> it's a rare Eldrazi. It's a four generic, one colorless five five. So it's a five mana five five with trample and haste. And whenever it becomes the, What's its drawback? Whenever What's the drawback? It, it becomes the target of a spell an opponent controls, counter that spell unless its controller discards a card. The end. End That's of creature. Scary. That's <laughs> unbelievable. You remember Rumbling Slum? <laughs> That was a five-five trampler with a, with like sort of a drawback, sort of a plus. Slum. All right. Together. Yeah, you use that Google to learn Google. what these old cards do. Boy, Reality Smasher is scary. Guilt packed. Oh wow. Let's talk oh. about this with the um uh the God. What's the the two mana two one that copies power and toughness? Mm. Oh, that card. Well, I'm. I'm gonna, mimic. Yeah, I'll draw the mimic. Draw the mimic. Totally there we go. Sweet. Mm. So I'm going to bring up, for those who are curious, the Rumbling Slum. And <laughs> the Rumbling, because you need to see this card, it's important to, to note what, what is going on here. The Rumbling Slum came out originally in Guild Pact. It was and the flavor text on that is golden. It was reprinted in, in Plain Chase, but it is a two green, one red, one generic 5-5. Five five. It's four mana 5-5. Five five. That's amazing, right? A high five. At the beginning of your upkeep, it deals one damage to each player. So it's sort of like a Juzam Jin, where it's a four mana five mana that deals you one damage, but it also deals them one damage. Yeah. Card was not very good because it can be chump blocked all day. It doesn't have trample, you know. It doesn't have haste. haste. Yeah, it, it, it can't be played with like four lands of anything as long as one of them makes a colorless. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah obviously, we... this card's absurd. I can't believe. I mean, this this got through development as is. This is. This one I looked at and I thought for sure it was just wrong. I thought it was going to be like, whenever it becomes a target of a spell or ability and opponent controls, you have to discard a card. Right. And I would still play Reality Smasher. <laughs> yeah, that card's Aaron, Aaron, does it smash your reality? Uh, yes. Ooh. Yes. Ooh. I, I'm quite terrified of this card. Like, this is a card where, you know, if I... You know, we talked about what it would be like to see. So Sylvan Advocate by itself didn't really impress me. But when you pair it up with Anna Fenza, when you follow that curve, that's not something I want to see. You know, like I'm, t I'm terrified to see that happen. And right. that's sort of what I look for in a card. Like if I'm the opponent and I see this card, am I going to be like, mm, it's this? Um, you know, but when I see Reality Smash, it's like, oh, oh, like you're just looking at your hand like I need an answer to this now. And and that's sort of how I determine how powerful a creature is. If if it land, if it hits the battlefield, how much I care about it is is, is based on how scary it is. And so Sylvan Advocate, that's cute girl, a reality smasher, oh God. <laughs> All yeah. right, so I want to I want to cover some, uh, some more really quickly here. We're about to run out of time, but I want to say that Thought Not Seer is uh, is cute enough and there's so many puns we had to Crazy name we had to name the show after it with a really weird artwork it's mm -hmm. a three generic one colorless four four so and here's a four mana four four alongside your four mana five five was talked about when it enters the battlefield target opponent reveals their hand you choose a non-land card from it and exile it when this dies well, i'm sorry when this when thought neat when when thought not seer leaves the battlefield target opponent draws a card so it's basically like vendillion click on a colorless guy on arguably steroids. arguably better because now it is exile on the card so you can process it versus Vendillion, which put it on the bottom of their deck. And this card's bananas. Yeah. Thought Not Seer is insane. Uh, Eldrazi aggro, like colorless aggro could just be a thing with Mimic, Reality Smasher, and Thought Not Seer. Uh, this card is insanely powerful. 
A another type of card that forces you to change the way you build your deck. Right. Um, because you need more repeatable effects. You can't just depend on your one win condition anymore if you're a control deck. Um, it, it picks off, you know, uh, if, if you've got one kill spell and you can just run over tokens all day with your Thought Knots here and your Reality Smasher. Yeah, this card's great. This card's seriously powerful. Aaron? Beats processors, too. Yeah. Exile is a card, then you go ahead and eat that card. And... Yep. So, no, I think that card's really good. I've seen some comparisons to uh, people have alluded it to being like a, a take on like Vendillion Click, you know, kind of card yeah. like that. And mm -hmm. um, I think this is good. I think that will absolutely see play. Yeah. So I think uh, Bearer of Silence, really quickly, I want to talk about it's a black and a generic mana 2-1 uh, rare Eldrazi, it has Devoid, when it enters the battlefield, I'm sorry, when you cast him, just when you cast him, whether or not it's countered or not, you may pay a colorless and a generic mana. If you do, target opponent sacrifices a creature. So it's kind of, uh, you know, uh, not quite Necrotal, it's more of a, um, give me a sacrifice dude. What was the one from Zendikar, the three Gatekeeper black? Gatekeeper of Malakir. Thank you, Gatekeeper of Malakir, Ooh, perfect. Classic. But it also has flying, and it also can't block. So there could be more words on this card. So it's a two mana two one flyer that can't block, but when you cast it, it's got that really sweet casting ability. Aaron, yeah. do you like this one, this guy? I wouldn't kick it out of my bed for eating Cheetos, but yeah. It doesn't rustle your jimmies quite the no, same way. No, it doesn't quite tickle <laughs> right. my trigger. <laughs> doesn't doesn't top the sandwich, as it were, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Yeah, I mean this card's can. good. I, I also it also doesn't uh, doesn't really trigger trigger my battle cry. I just uh, <laughs> oh, Jesus. You know, it's good. It's a vampire interloper. Like vampire interloper is pretty sweet. You know, two yeah. one flying camp block. That's a good aggressive card. Sure. But uh, and the additional ability is nice. But it's it's a little fragile. Um, there are so many tokens in standard right now that this one's probably going to have to wait in line until the meta game changes. Yeah. Fair enough. So let's move on here to some of our last few we want to talk about. Um, I wanted to bring up uh, Warping Whale, which was yes. almost which was almost the title of this episode, um, or some pun of it. Whale, uh, it whale, is, whale. Hey, y'all. It's a generic and a colorless mana instant. It's uncommon. You may choose one of these three options. You exile target creature with power or toughness of one or less. Looking uh, at you, Jace. Looking at you, Jace. It counters target sorcery spell, which is, go on. What was the sorcery? Obliteration. Uh, Thank you. Uh, uh, envelop. Envelop. Well, no, no, not the card that it was. Like, what's it countering? Infinite obliteration. Oh, what's it countering? Yeah, and then, if you ain't got nothing else to do, at instant speed, you put a 1-1 one, one colorless Eldrazi Scion creature token on the battlefield. It has sack it to add a colorless mana to your mana pool. It can chump block on demand. It can kill the best planeswalker in standard. Uh, it can stop the card that me messes up the ramp decks. Uh, it, it slices and dices. Yeah, yeah. I really like this card. You know, I, I played Green Red Ramp for a little while, and we were lacking a really good two drop. And I don't know if this is necessarily it, but you know, we were using Sylvan Scrying. We weren't really happy about it. Um, we did use Hangerback Walker, which don't get me wrong, Hangerback Walker is a good card, but I've always felt like there are. I just feel like there have to be better cards than that in this kind of deck. You know, I feel like I always felt like Hang Hangerback was kind of jammed into the deck. Um, and a card like this, like you said, it kind of does everything. You know, Infinite Obliteration is really bad for the ramp deck. Um, mm -hmm. Chase is really bad because we can't interact with it. They count on that happening. Um, and if you have managed to get to the late game and you didn't need it for anything else, or if you drew multiples, make yourself a 1 1 and ramp into something. I really, really like this. I think the card is incredibly strong. And my last little bit, because I have to, Jawara Isle Avenger is very good in Popper. Uh, this will be a strong card. It is a blue and four generic mana, 3-3 three, three flyer. It is a snit. It is a just five mana, 3-3 three, three flyer. However, with Surge, it is a blue and two colorless. So it is then a three mana, 3-3 three, three flyer. If you play a Cloud of Fairies and then play Jawara Isle Avenger, high five. If you play Spire Golem for free, and you play pay three mana. You have a Dwarf Avenger. So like, is Lotus Petal in Pauper? Uh, I think it's banned. I don't. Okay. I, I can't I was recall. Say, at this that'd point. be absurd. But that's the thing. I'm just noting that I think it's a really good card in Popper because now I care about Popper. But whatever. Uh, let's move on here to our splash damage while we have some time left. Uh, splash damage this week is talking about a few things. First is Activision Blizzard buys MLG for an absolute butt ton of money. Uh, only <laughs> only forty six million dollars. You know, only as the, just forty six million dollars uh, because Blizzard's 
you know, the, the number one thing that most people sort of knock on Blizzard for right now is their organized play systems are bad. They're, they're really weird. They're hard to understand. It doesn't really make a lot of sense. MLG has that on lockdown because that's what they do. It is just a tournament series. It is a series of events that put, you know, X against Y, and that's what they're going to want to do. And, you know, this could be, this could just be big in terms of like, you know, gaming is turning into an like an actual sport sport where people really respect it. There's going to be huge stars. They're going to make millions of dollars. Magic doesn't want any of that because not because sponsors, but it's okay. Every other game <laughs> is going to blow up and these people are going to get insanely popular and you're going to see them on t-shirts and whatever sometime in the future. I mean, at this point, I, I will hearken it very, very, very closely to YouTube. Like at this point, YouTube is literally raising our children. I have kids. I'm telling you right now, those people who make the dumb Minecraft videos, the PewDiePies of the world, are all talking. They are the largest kids show producers on the planet. Like yeah. kids, just they 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 devour it. Trust me, I know because I hear about it forever. And they're just like these random people who I've never heard of, but they watch them for hours and hours every day. They have a million subscribers. MLG is the start of where esports and gaming kind of just start to kind of blow up to the point where it's a cultural phenomenon. At this point, uh -huh. YouTube is just taking over. It's taking over kids shows. There's no more Saturday morning cartoons. There's a new hour long video every single day that my kids devour of some random content creator. Mm -hmm. I definitely like your quote of, I have kids. I don't raise them. YouTube does. <laughs> Which is very funny to me on a on a personal. I mean, hey, it's mine. It's one, Minecraft. One. Minecraft and YouTube are literally raising this generation. I kid you not. No, and he's literally and creating this generation, just one right. after the other, after the other, after the other. Yeah. Yep. They're they're a they're like a pretty big slice on the on the on the uh, pie graph of total people in the world. Yeah. It's like Irwin Scion token. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I mean, forty six million dollars. You say it's a butt ton of money. It's actually not that much money by comparison. Um, MLG has been around for like 15 years now. Right. Uh, it's sort of floundering a little bit in recent years. I think that because they were the first, it took them a little bit longer to get going than they thought they would. Mm -hmm. And they were trying to sell over the summer and didn't really get anything together. Now they're finally getting something together. Blizzard is exactly the kind of company you want to get bought by if you're MLG. Right. Uh, they're going to keep everything basically the same um, in terms of who's running the company and what they're doing. Mm -hmm. Um I think that it's it's a super good partnership. Um, they're gonna they're gonna keep everything together. Digital athletics, as I like to call it, is only growing in popularity now. Uh, League of Legends Worlds had some ridiculous like I don't know, forty million people watch it, fifty million people watch it, uh, and they filled uh, Madison Square, Square Garden for North American champs, wow. which the winner of that went to worlds. So they like went to the championship game Jeez. and they filled Madison Square Garden. Like esports are a big deal and they're only getting bigger. Uh, this is big for magic in particular because magic, as we've discussed on the show, seems like they don't want to be an esport so much anymore, which is weird. Um, like on the one hand, it's a little understandable because they're not electronic, but it's with thing with with things like this happening. Like, how can you pass this up? I mean, at some point, I think Wizards just needs to be like, okay, we'll partner with a big company like a Coke, a Pepsi. You know what I mean? A Reebok, a Nike. Like, you don't have to kind of do like the small, medium sponsors. Like, get a big one and just go and say the Pro Tour is going to be a million dollars, y'all, because we're going to have Reebok sponsoring it or whatever. Brought to you by Nike, and everyone's going to lose their minds, and people are actually going to be more excited about it. I mean, we've we've had this con we've had this conversation many times, but like this, this again, you just keep seeing this happen, and you just keep going like. We could have that. That could be us too. The yeah, I don't know if we I could would, fill. Okay. I don't know if we could fill Madison Square Garden, but we could at least fill the lower tier of it. It's yeah. like you know. The only thing I would like to add is, after reading this article, I discovered that the founder and long-term CEO of Major League Gaming is named Sundance De Giovanni. <laughs> That's like the coolest. If name I ever, ever do drag, yeah, man. I want that to be my drag queen name. <laughs> yeah. That's the I name I danced as, under in college. Yeah. I want to be known as Sundance to Giovanni. That's the only thing that jumped out at me when they were like long-term CEO. I'm like, is that a drag queen? Like, who is that? Like, Sundance so, to Giovanni. Sundance it's, it's Giovanni, huge. come on. So huge for Sundance uh, and also huge <laughs> for Blizzard is that now they actually have a they've, – they've bought a framework right. to broadcast their tournaments and put on their tournaments. And that's a big deal because, as we mentioned, it's basically impossible – 
to find a Hearthstone tournament, and their their organized play department is pretty bad um, currently. No but, one knows what's going on, basically. Yeah, I mean, but with this edition, they got they. This is a good edition. Sure. So uh, we're, we're running a little late here, so I'm just going to go ahead. I, I know we wanted to talk about some other things, but unfortunately we have ran out of time. Uh, there is a global poker lead that's going to try to match poker with League of Legends. Yep, they're trying uh, to sportify poker in the way that League of Legends has has Phil's ML, MSG. Right. And Aaron, we wanted to talk about how Ray wasn't in the Star Wars products, but now it is going to be in Star Wars Monopoly, for example. Like, that's something I got on Christmas morning when my little girl was like, well, where's Ray? And I'm like... <laughs> Um, that's Darth Vader. She's like, who is that? I'm like, he's not in the movie, <laughs> but he was this bad guy. I mean, you know, it's just weird and you didn't want that. And I'm glad they've changed their mind, even though it should have been really obvious. Whatever. We're going to roll over to the finisher now, uh, ladies and gentlemen. And I'm going to have to keep on the first pick because the scene isn't set up correctly. Whatever. Uh, <laughs> shush. On his Twitter page, Luis Scott Vargas announced that he and his wife, Geneva Sir. Sarcedo, is that right? Sarcedo. 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 Sarcedo, if you're into the flavor. Ooh, Sarcedo. Ooh, Sarcedo. well, I, I like I like saying things correctly. So, <laughs> Geneva Sarcedo are expecting, yay! <laughs> Congratulations to LSV and Geneva, that's great. But this does beg the question, as the master of puns and all things wordplay, what should the newest Scott Vargas be named? Aaron? Oh, God. Well, as expected, I am personally hoping for a girl, mm -hmm. in which case I think that they should name her Chanel Fireball Scott Vargas. Nice. Well, if they have a boy, I would certainly hope that the happy couple would consider one of their best friends and name their newborn son Paul, Paul, Paul Scott Vargas, <laughs> Paul. <laughs> And because I had time to fix it, we'll go to the finisher slide. And I will, given his article series, I'm excitedly anticipating the arrival of Lux Skill Victoria. <laughs> yes. Like that. That's fantastic. So, ladies and gentlemen, that ends another episode of Magic Mike's. Ruben, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. Aaron, as always. Thank you. All right. So we're going to move on to our outro slide here. Thank you guys very, very much for watching. You can visit our website at magicmikespodcast.com. That exists thanks to our Patreon supporters at patreon.com slash magicmikes. You can follow, like, tweet, favorite, share, do everything social that tells people that we exist. Catch us online at twitch.tv slash magicmikes, on Twitter at magicmikescast, on Reddit at reddit.com slash r slash magicmikes, and on Facebook at facebook.com slash magicmikes. Talk to us privately at magicmikespodcast at gmail.com. Follow the audio-only podcast at magicmikespodcast. I'm sorry, at magicmikespodcast.libsend.com or find us on iTunes or join us here next week, same time, same place, for another episode of Magic Mikes. Good night, everybody. <laughs> <laughs>